So you guys ready? Yeah. Two of you guys over here ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's get this party started. Let's kick the video. Every time I watch that highlight, I have two different reactions. One is it kind of gets me fired up a little bit. The other one is I can't believe I used to do that stuff. <laughs> so it was the 1993 season for the Kansas City Chiefs. There was a lot of anticipation going into that season. Why? We just had a pretty good season. We were 10 and 6. We made it to the playoffs. But it was during the offseason some pretty incredible things took place. One was all of our top players, everybody stayed, nobody left. And then we added two very special players. Number 32, Hall of Fame running back Marcus Allen. Does everybody remember Marcus Allen? Oh yeah, one of the great ones. And then we added number 19, the great Joe Montana. Now I can remember the very first game, the very first huddle with Joe. We're in Tampa Bay and waiting for Joe to enter the huddle and give us the play. Here he comes. All right, guys, you ready? This is gonna be a great season. So here's the first play. Hold up, JJ. At some point, we're calling XNZ post. When I call that post route, you better fly, because I'm gonna launch it. As Soon as he said that, it was like my heart kind of jumped out of my chest for a second. And for that very moment, I started questioning my abilities. What if I mess up? What if I drop the ball? I'm not Jerry Rice. I mean, can I really play with one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game? One of my goals here today is to perhaps help you deal with a moment like that. <clears throat> Maybe a moment when you're in a situation and you're filled with doubt, fear, frustration, or concern, or maybe just feeling the pressure to be able to perform at a high level, to really take your performance to another level. Now, my understanding is, the, is though that in spite of the pandemic, in spite of some of the challenges you guys have all been dealing with, I hear you guys are still winning. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I heard you guys had one of the hardest, best years ever. And you're all to be the committed of that. But it's a new sales season. It's a new season. And it's your moment, right? So the mentality has to be more like, how can you be better than you were the season before? How can you improve? How can you grow? How can you truly seize the opportunities waiting for you this year? Because that's what I'm really going to be talking about and sharing with you how I dealt with so many challenges and obstacles and still rose above higher than anyone thought I would be. Nobody in a million years thought I would play in the NFL. Now, as a motivational speaker, yes, I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to inspire you. I want you to do more, be more, and achieve more. But at the same time, I'm here to help you elevate your performance so that you're always performing at the highest level, so that you are the best of the best at what you do, and you stay the best. Because I know a little something about being the best in the world at my job. So when you think about this simple game we call football, where we're throwing and catching and kicking this leather ball, there are millions of people playing this game throughout the world, millions of people. The NFL is the highest level you can reach in football. There's no other level you go to. You don't graduate to like the Emperor League or you're not promoted to the Ambassador League. It's the NFL. And every year, 1,696 men on our active NFL roster. 1,696 out of the millions that are playing. And I was one of those for nine years. There's 32 NFL teams 
NFL teams will typically start two wide receivers. I was a wide receiver. My job was to catch the football. So that means every year there's 64 job openings to be a starting wide receiver in the NFL. And I held that for five years. What's the point? The point is you don't make it to the NFL by accident. And you don't stay there because someone's doing you a favor. Doesn't matter who you know, what family you've been born into, your background, no. You make it because you earn it. And you stay there because you continue to earn it. So for me, it was that journey to the NFL. It was a time that I spent there. I learned some very valuable success principles and some winning strategies that allowed me to play at that level, but then make the transition to life after the game and still perform at a high level. But you see, the game taught me so much. It taught me how to grow, how to improve, how to handle competition, how to handle change, how to handle success. Not everyone can actually handle being successful. How to work within a team where you work with so many different people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, and work together as a unit and move towards a vision, move towards a common goal. Also taught me how to deal with adversity, the unexpected, especially when things are going well. Let me illustrate it this way. So I've been married to my college sweetheart, Raina, for almost 32 years next month, June 16th. 32 years. And when we got married, we had one simple goal when it came to a family. We wanted three children. Less than that, not enough. More than that, too many. So we have Dante, Camille, and LeJordan. About 16 years ago, we received a call from my nephew, Justin, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Justin goes, uncle, there is craziness going on out here. You need to come check on us. So 24 hours later after that, I'm on a plane flying to Tulsa, Oklahoma to check on my five nieces and nephews. 24 hours after that, I'm in a courthouse standing before the judge and says, Mr. Burden, we're gonna take your five nieces and nephews and place them in five separate foster homes. You're the next of kin, so what would you like to do? What do you do in a moment where you gotta make a split second decision that's gonna impact so many lives? Well, the first thing I did, I was like, Judge, let me call my wife first. But after a five minute conversation, we were like, let's take all five of the children. And we immediately merged them into our family. And when we made this decision, so many people around us were like, why would you do that? Why would you add five more mouths to feed? Well, my wife, Rain, and I, we saw it as an opportunity to impact five more lives. And I believe we did that, but I also believe they impacted our lives as well. But when I think about you and the products that you offer and the impact you make on people in the world today, I think, Dave, I just heard you say, uh, what was it, um, emotional, what was that word used, Dave? Happiness, what was it? Yeah, moments of goodness. How many more lives could you really impact if you dialed it up? if you raise the bar of your performance. When I was in the NFL, we had a habit of labeling our coaches. We would call them theory coaches and player coaches. The theory coaches were the coaches who never played, or who played high school. They played college, but they never played in the NFL. So they didn't know what it was like to play at this level where you're playing against some of the most amazing athletes in the world. Now, don't get me wrong, they were great coaches, and I still learned a lot from them. But they were always missing that personal experience, you know, when it came to coaching. That's why we labeled the other ones player coaches, because they played in the NFL. And the difference between college and pro is it's the speed of the game. It is so much faster. And those player coaches, they had that personal experience, and you could tell from the way they coached us. And I share that because I'm more than just an athlete. Playing in the NFL was something I did, but I was always planning for life after the game, making that transition. And I was involved in several businesses over the years. I ran a couple of medical companies in Lee Summit, Missouri. I was part owner of a fitness company in Atlanta. I held a free camp for years for all the children in Portland, Oregon. I love what I was doing, 
but I love more what I do today because now I get to impact more lives throughout the world. But one of the advantages I have, it's pretty interesting when you're in the, the business world and the professional sports, because there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of similarities. Now, obviously, there's one big difference. I mean, in football, I'm no longer running from my life because someone 300 pounds is trying to take my head off. But it's the physical attributes in the NFL that determine your success. That's why they would measure us in the 40. How quick are you in the shuttle? How high can you jump? How many times can you lift 225 pounds? And if you didn't hit certain benchmarks, you didn't even get a shot. But see, in the business world, it's different. We control the odds. And it's all based on our effort and our commitment. And think about that. The effort we make every single day to do our job, that's our responsibility. And that's something we can control. So let me ask this. How many of you have actually had a conversation with a professional athlete? I mean, a real conversation. Got to talk to them and get to know them. Anybody here ever talked to a professional athlete? Bobby Abier. Bobby Abier. Can you catch? Can you catch? Bobby Abier. Yes, he was my quarterback. And I asked this question because we're kind of of a different breed and you find out how it is we were able to make it to that level. And here's where I'm going. I want you to remember this. When I was a young athlete, my coaches would always say, hey, JJ, outwork the competition. Work two times as hard as your competitor, and you will always win on game day. So that was the approach I took. And it worked in high school. It worked in college. It didn't work in the NFL. Because everyone was a great athlete. Everyone was putting in the work. So what I learned after year one, when I saw so much parity, was making those 1% improvements every day. I was striving to make these little tweaks, improvements here, there, and there in my game. And that was the difference between whether you played on Sunday or whether you watched the game from your sofa on Sunday. And I share that with you because when you get a chance to listen to someone like me who's a high performer in another profession, there's always something you can learn. And you're looking for those little 1% incremental improvements because that could be the difference between you going from here to there as you look to exceed your goals. Now, recognizing that we have so many people here from the Hershey team, I know we got salespeople in the house, we got those from marketing and finance and human resources and supply chain and all these other departments. But here's what I need you to think about. There's a saying out there that goes like, there is no I in team. Has everybody heard that? There is no I in team. I fully believe in it. It's all about the team. Put the team's goals ahead of your own. I get that. But what makes you a better teammate is when you flip that and you say, there better be an I in team. There better be an I in team because you got to do your job first at a high level. And when you do that, that allows the team to be more successful. So think about this, if everyone in this room took one or two nuggets that I'm going to share today and apply that in your game plan, what kind of impact could that make on this company? Now to do that though, it takes a commitment, it really does. You make that commitment, that vow, that promise that you're going to do something, well if you haven't committed already, I need you to commit right now. You need to be all in. It's about playing at 100%. Playing at 100% means that you are fully engaged, you're locked in, and you're ready to take in these concepts I'm going to share. Because I believe that the results you get out of anything is based on two things. If you show up and how you show up. So everybody that's here, you get a gold star because you showed up. But how did you show up? What's your attitude like right now? What's your thought process? What are your intentions? What do you want to get out of this event? What do you want to take home with you? Because again, I have something here for everyone. And I also want you to think about this. I realize this is a business event, but also think about where can you apply these principles in your personal life? Because we're all trying to get that work-life balance, right? And when you're winning in one, you could be winning in the other area too. So you guys ready? You ready for these points I'm going to share? So I call them 
seizing your opportunity success tips. And here's the first one. The first one is this. I need everybody in here. You got to get your head in the game. You got to